What's up, Weld Tube? My name is Matt Arnold, uh, Warrior Welding TX on Instagram. Um, I'm a Texas rig welder and a faculty welding instructor for Dallas College. Uh, Alan called me down here today to show you guys a little bit about sanitary tube welding. I know it's a, a big industry and there's not a lot of coverage on it. If you look on YouTube, you can't really find anything. So today we're going to change that for you guys. Walk you through a little two inch demo on some 065 wall sanitary. Give you a few tips and tricks on what to look for, different settings on purges and stuff like that. And hopefully I'll get something out of it. So to make this uh, demo as most realistic as we can, I'm simulating kind of like we're in a plant environment. So I got my rig, my engine drive. Here I got my Lincoln 305G, okay? Uh, 100 foot 240 extension cord to run my Miller Dynasty. So just like if we're going to a plant where we didn't have power to plug into or whatever, got generator power right on the truck. So that's how we're gonna roll with this TIG demo. So 305G, always gotta give a shout out to Illumin Reel and Pipeliners Cloud. Today we're, we're gonna use from Tycon Industries, TIG Aesthetics, these are the purge plugs that I like to use for sanitary work. They work great for low amp applications, low heat. Um, wouldn't use these for heavy wall, but for thin wall tubing, these are great. They last a long time, they're reasonably affordable. Um, my little purge plug set up, my little kit, try to keep everything organized when you're a rig welder. Space is a, a hot commodity, so you try to keep everything as organized as you can. Um, this here is my Miller, my Dynasty 210. This is what we're going to be running off of for our demo today. Um, I got it set up today, not, not lift arc off the machine. Like I said, um, I'm going to run off this, so that's why I'm plugged in the actual port rather than clipped onto my stinger and running just a hot lead. So CK, all my stuff's quick disconnects, in and out of the plant, super fast, super reliable, tool free, um, big 300 bottle with a dual flow meter. One going to my rig, one going to the actual purge plugs themselves, as you can see here, coming in the back of the tube. Um, everybody likes to customize their hoods, why not customize your whip? So if you have a 7 8 motorcycle grip, everyone knows a thicker grip on a TIG rig makes it easier to walk. So the old walking stick trip, little metal flake grip, make things your own. Also, starting today, I just tried this brand new Weld Beast lens. It's the brand new variable shade, and let me tell you, it's amazing. It's super clear, bluish purple uh, tint to the puddle. It's hands down the best lens I've ever used so far, and I've used a lot. I've been in the game 15 years, and so far that's number one in my book. Definitely recommend it. All right, guys, like I said, I'm gonna be doing a two inch sanitary tube weld today. It's 065 wall, and this one in particular is 304 stainless. Um, it's actually just stuff I had left over from a job, so that's what we're going to use today, all right? So 304 stainless, as far as stainlesses go, it's kind of the bottom of the barrel. So you're going to see this kind of stuff in breweries or dairy, places where acid, salt, stuff like that don't really exist. Um, as you get into pharmaceutical grade stuff and um, even cosmetic plants, um, whenever you're using acids and chemicals and stuff like that, you're going to jump more into the 316s and even into like Hastelloy C22 and some, some higher grade stainlesses and alloys to really avoid corrosion. So the higher you go up in grade are for the higher acidities, salts and stuff like that. So for low acid type work like uh, beer and breweries and whatnot, 304 stainless is kind of your run of the mill. Um, they all weld the same for the most part, but just so you know, if you do get into this game that uh, it's not all just stainless steel, okay? You gotta know what's going through the product because Anything going through this tube is either going on you or in you, so purity is the number one name of the game, okay? That brings me to another point. We're not gonna use any filler material for this sanitary weld, and why is that, you may ask. Um, it's an autogenous process, okay? So, which meaning, we're just gonna use fusion. We only wanna use the parent material to fuse this weld. By adding in filler rods and different things like that, you're gonna actually add impurities into the material, which create, make it less sanitary. So. It's called sanitary tubing for a reason, and by not adding any outside atmosphere or anything into it, um, we're gonna keep it that way. So our initial purge, I'm gonna run it pretty hot. Um, I wanna force most of the atmosphere out of the tube as I can. Don't ever weld with this much purge going through it. When I actually light up on it, I'll probably be running about five to 10 cubic feet per hour, pretty low. Um, if you have too much purge inside the tube while you're welding, not only can it blow the bead out when you terminate it because of the pressure, but also, we're not dealing with filler metal here. So um, the actual bead, so say that's your pipe, you put the bead in, it'll actually expand the bead out 
So you have a hump on the outside of the tube and a low spot on the inside, which is a no-go because it can trap contamination and make it harder to clean. So the goal is to have a perfectly smooth bead on the inside of the tube. So by doing that, you need a lower purge gas. It might take a little bit longer to ensure you have that purity inside the tube, but a couple extra minutes never really hurt anybody. We're looking for high-end work here, um, not shoddy. Everything's got to be perfect, and sanitary doesn't play. So again, this is people's lives. So. I got a cold knuckle. I'm going to give it a minute though. All right, guys, about to get started here. Um, everything's set up, got the purge ready to go. I'm running about eight cubic feet per hour. Um, so a little bit lower than you'd normally be used to. Got my Dynasty set on 42 amps, lift arc, no pedal here. The goal here is to weld from 6 o'clock to 12 o'clock twice, okay? We're not going to whip out. We're not going to do quarter to quarter or anything like that, 6 to 9. You want to start at the bottom. We're going to go all the way to 12 o'clock. The least amount of tie-ins, the better. So it's kind of where we're at right now, okay? The biggest trick to this is, since we don't have any filler material, when you light your arc, okay, you want to watch for the puddle to sink. All right, it's gonna sink a little bit and then start walking your cup. As you start to walk your cup slowly, you're gonna see in the puddle, and I'm not sure if the camera's gonna be able to get close enough to see it, but there's gonna be a small dot inside the puddle and it whips around like a hurricane, okay? It's called a devil's eye. As long as you have that devil's eye going, you know you're getting 100% fusion. So at that point, you're just trying to maintain that, that bead consistency and profile, okay? Alright guys, same thing over here, it's going to light up nice and slow, and watch that puddle start to drop, and just keep an eye out for that devil's eye, okay? Tiny little button, just spinning like crazy in there, so you know you're getting the 100% root fusion, take it easy, there's no need to rush, stay calm, stay comfortable, sometimes it's tough coming up from 6 the 12 in one shot. It takes a little bit of practice, but once you get the hang of it, it sure beats trying to prep a tie-in on this kind of stuff because there's really no room for error. So, so another big thing about the sanitary game is cleanliness. So after you're done putting your bead in, you always got to polish the bead out. So the best, quickest method I can find is one of these Scott Sprite bristle wheels. Um, I hook mine up to a drill. You don't need a bunch of high speed. You just, you just need it to spin, and if you get it well, it's still hot. It cleans better than if you let it cool down, and it won't scratch the tube like a wire brush. So it's definitely a go-to in my arsenal of, of tools. Thanks for tuning in today, guys. I hope you learned something. Um, it's not something touched on very often, so if there's any questions you had that I was able to answer, that's awesome. If not, you can hit me on the DMs at Warrior Welding TX. I'll answer anything I can, and if not, I'll probably know somebody that can answer it for you, and I'll shoot you in that direction. So thanks again for tuning in today. We really appreciate the love and the followers and all the likes and, and comments on YouTube, so keep them coming, guys. We'll keep making videos. Thanks.